All right, gang, Jeremy Hazel here for Seven Season Studios, and this is a lesson from our brand new course, Affinity Designer, How to Do Artistic Text and Font in Affinity Designer. So if you like this lesson and you want to learn more about Affinity Designer, go ahead and check out the link below for an exclusive offer for our YouTube folks. Other than that, let's go ahead and get into here and start rolling those credits. All right, let's create something. All right, gang, and welcome to the part of the lesson in which we actually create a font. So this lesson is going to be a little bit longer. I should say this section is going to be a little bit longer. And I've included in your downloads this file, which really shows in Affinity Designer some of the big points that we're going to be talking about when you design font later in this section. Let's go ahead. This is not going to be the most exciting lesson, but it is going to be essential when we start talking about these concepts in font design. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, I've got on the screen here this whole text thing. It's got two different texts in it. One of them is a script. One of them is a more traditional font called Lazy Life. And you'll notice that the layer that I've got right here, I've turned it into a group of curves so that you can use it even if you don't have these fonts. All right, so the first thing that I want to talk about, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn on the kerning now. We went through kerning earlier in this course. Kerning is simply the distance between the individual letters. And as you know now, if you have kind of a rounded area and a solid area, the kerning's a little bit tighter. If you have two line areas, it's a little bit bigger. So this shows you kind of where kerning is in our discussion. Now I'm going to bring up something new. Let's go ahead and turn on the baseline layer. Now the baseline layer is the layer that everything rests on. Now you see I have two different fonts here and they really have two different baselines, right? If I was to take the baseline for this cursive scripty font, I would have to move it up a little bit. So this is what the baseline's all about. Now, when you got a baseline, some of the letters have a descender. So some of the letters that you will create have a descender that sticks down below the baseline. You see how we're building up on some of these terms. Now, the next term you need to become familiar with is the cap line. The cap line is where your capital letters are going to touch. And again, because that cursive script has a little bit different cap line, you would have to adjust it up a little bit or down to make it work. Now, once you've got a cap line, it's worth mentioning here, there's something called the X height. Now, this is the cross height, the X height, whatever you want to call it. And the X height is where the non-capital letters will traditionally rest. So your X height will kind of tell the story about where all of your non-capital letters should ideally rest. And once you have that height, you then have some letters like the letter F that have an ascender. So the ascender sticks up above the cross height. Now, as a font designer, and I will be the first to raise my hand and say I am not a professional font designer, but as a font designer, you can absolutely adjust the descenders, the ascenders, that cross height, the cap height, and the baseline to really get some good dynamics around what you're trying to do. So while I know this isn't the most exciting stuff, we're in this text mastery course and I want to clear this up before we go into how to create a font. So let's go ahead and get into how to create the font and get on to the next one. 